Hey there gang, welcome down to the prop shop here. I'm Bill Duran and I'm really excited to keep on trucking with the molding and casting series we've been doing. You guys have given us a lot of great feedback. Uh, you look like you're really stoked about making molds and casting some stuff. So we're gonna do something really, really fun today. It's called cold casting. What is that you say? Well, it's a technique for getting an authentic metallic finish on your cast plastic pieces. Uh, without having to actually melt down any metal, hence the cold casting. This particular technique that I use utilizes the urethane resins that we talked about in our previous videos. And I also gotta recommend you tint that resin uh, with a dark color like black. I've done a lot of experiments with different tints and different colors, and if you get a gray finish on your plastic, that's with the white plastic like from Smoothcast 300, along with the black tint that you put in there, you get a gray finish and that behind your metallic finish, no matter if it's a brass or aluminum or a bronze, that tends to have the best effect. Now you can cold cast with just about any type of mold, but there are some considerations to make. The easiest one to do is a one part mold because you don't have to worry about any seams. If you have a two part mold, you can totally still do it, but it's a little bit trickier. The reason being, Cold casting leaves you with a very thin metallic finish on the outside of your plastic resin. That finish cannot be sanded, which means if your seam is a little janky or a little bit misregistered, then you can't go back in and fix it. You just kind of have to polish it up and take it as it is. That doesn't mean you can't do it, but you really have to have a nice seam line along the edge of your mold. But other than that, your imagination is your only limitation. You can cold cast all sorts of stuff like this really cool dagger. My buddy Will over at WM Armory made. This was done with uh, a really cool copper finish on it. And we've done Dragon Priest masks in the past using cold cast finishing techniques and they look super legit. The key ingredient to cold casting is using really good metallic powders. I like to get mine either from Smooth On directly or from the Complete Sculptor. We'll have linked to those down below. Those guys make powders specifically for this purpose. The other key thing to remember here is that breathing metallic powders is really bad for you. So whenever you have your metal powders open, it pays to be wearing a respirator. This will make sure no particles get into your lungs. To get started, you want to dust the mold. I like to take a little bit of that metallic powder and sort of dust it all over the whole surface of the mold and then shift it around a whole bunch to make sure it gets totally covered. This is kind of like the way we use baby powder as a mold release, but instead of using baby powder, we use a metallic powder. Again, wearing your respirator, making sure you don't breathe any of this stuff, dust the inside of the mold and you'll find that the powder will stick to the silicone and provide a nice even coating. Then I'll gently pour out the extra powder onto a piece of paper and that extra powder can get mixed into your resin. Then you can mix up your resin like you normally would. I put the powder and the tint all in the side B and pre-mix all of that before putting in the side A. Once the side A is all mixed in, I'll pour it into my mold. Now you do have to be kind of careful here. If you just dump it in willy-nilly, you can displace some of that powder, creating a spot that doesn't have any coverage on it. So I like to pour slowly and gently uh, over the surface of my mold. If there's any area on the mold where it doesn't matter if the finish gets displaced, then you'll wanna pour it there. Especially if you're pouring into a really deep mold. That resin's gonna fall and hit the bottom surface and that sort of splattering motion will displace a whole bunch of that metallic powder. This is the sort of thing where you'll do a couple castings to see what the best technique is for your particular mold. I also don't like to pour resin down the side of a deep mold because it will actually pull the powder off it on its way down. The best place is just sort of bombs away and hit a spot you don't care about. Then you wait for your resin to cure just like normal. Once it is cured, you can demold it from your silicone and it will actually just look like plastic. That outer finish just looks like whatever that metal color is, only plastic. The real magic comes through when you start polishing it. There's a very thin layer of metal on the outside of your cast piece, like this hearthstone symbol that we have is covered in brass. And if you take some fine steel wool and start buffing it, you'll see that shine start to show through. 
Now you do want to be careful, you can buff right through that metallic finish down to the plastic and nobody wants that. But if you just gently uh, rough up the surface a little bit, you'll get a really nice metallic finish. If you want to take it a step further, you can get some metal polish and buff up the surface even further. In fact, every pass that you do will give it an even more of a little bit of a shine. Just remember, this is an abrasive uh, process. It is actually scratching up the surface, though very, very fine. So you can overdo it. But a couple of passes with that polish and your plastic piece will now have a super legitimate metallic finish on the outside of it. Now there are limitless possibilities for cold casting, all sorts of really fun stuff you can do with it. Like I said, those Dragon Priest masks that we do are really, really cool with an awesome metallic finish on them. In fact, you can use some oxidizing solutions to rust that metallic finish and give you a real rust finish with some awesome texture on the outside of it. Now I also prefer not to seal my metallic finishes uh, with like spray paint or anything. Uh, if, it, if I go rusty, if I go super rusty on it, sometimes I will seal it a little bit just so I'm not handling a rusty object all the time. But for a really sort of clean metallic finish, I leave it bare. Now it may tarnish over time because that's what metals do. Then all you gotta do is give it a quick polish to bring that shine back. And that's it, that is cold casting in a nutshell. This is a technique that's really cool and I hope that you guys give it a try. Of course, if you haven't checked out the rest of our mold making videos yet, then you owe it to yourself to go watch all of them. We've got a playlist of them all set up. You can learn all the basics you need to know to start molding and casting your own prop pieces. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We have more really, really great prop and costume making videos coming for you guys, including more molding and casting and a few other surprises that we're gonna throw at you. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. And of course, get out there and make something. That is nowhere near enough rubber bands. I don't know. I didn't even think about that. <laughs>